Here's our first problem. We are given an expression and we're asked to find the limit when x approaches negative 3. Now the first thing you're going to want to do whenever you're being asked to find the limit is to simply plug in the value that x is approaching to, in this case negative 3, uh, into the expression and then see what the answer is. And so if I do that, I get negative 3 cubed minus 8 divided by 3 times negative 3 plus 7. And that's going to be equal to negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, which is negative 27 minus 8. And this whole thing is going to be divided by minus 9 plus 7. And I get negative 27 minus 8. That's like the negative of uh, 27 plus 8. So we've got negative 35 over minus 2. Can't really simplify that. Now let's go over to Alex, see if we have the right answer. Well, I suppose I can simplify it. It's 35 my, uh, divided by 2. Here I am looking at the problem on Alex. I'm going to put in the answer. So I did 35 backslash 2, and now I'm going to check. And we got the right answer, so finding a limit here was straightforward. Let's try another problem. We're being asked to find the limit when t approaches 4. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to replace a 4 wherever we see t. So replace t with 4. And we're going to have 1 over 4 minus 1 over 4. And that whole thing is going to be divided by 4 over 4. What this is, this is just going to be equal to 0 over 0. Uh, is that the answer? Is that the answer? Are we done? No. Notice that both the numerator and denominator tend to 0 as t approaches 4. I can try and factor this expression uh, to make it uh, simpler and see if we can find what the actual limit of this thing right here is. So if I want to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is start simplifying. And I want to find a common denominator for these fractions that are in the numerator. And so if I multiply the first term by t and the second term by 4, I have not changed the actual uh, expression, uh, but I have found a common denominator that, uh, that we can use. I can rewrite this as t minus 4 divided by 4t t minus 4, which is just going to be equal to 1 over 4t. And remember, I'm going to be careful here, I haven't taken the limit yet. And when I do, I end up with 1 over 16. Here we are on Alex. Got my answer. It's 1 over 16. Could put my answer into the box. And I'll click the check button and let's see if we found the limit of this expression. And we did. 
I want to look at the original expression and I'm going to call this f of x or I should perhaps call it f of t. And let's look at our answer, our simplified answer, and let's call that g of t. Now, all we did was essentially factor and rearrange uh, this f of t expression. And so it's going to give us the same uh, answer uh, for any t not equal to 4. And so f of t is equal to g of t for any t not equal to 4. And it turns out there's a rule that says if you have a situation like this, then the limit of f of t is going to be equal to the limit of g of t, or the limit as t approaches, well, I'll keep it specific to this example, as t approaches 4, f of t is going to be equal to the limit of t approaching 4 of g of t. So once we find the limit of g of t, we know we found the limit of f of t. Here's a problem for you to try on your own. Press pause, give it a try, and then when you're ready, press play, and we'll go through the solution together. Let's try plugging in 4 wherever we see a t. So we're going to take the limit here. We have 4 minus 4 over 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 8. And we see that we have 0 over 0. Now, if you look carefully at the question, you might have noticed that the numerator, t minus 4, is a factor of the denominator. So we can write the limit as t approaches 4 for t minus 4 over t minus 4 times t plus 2. All right. So I'm factoring uh, the denominator. When I do that, notice that a factor in the numerator and the denominator are going to cancel each other out. And I'm left with the limit as t approaches 4 of 1 over t plus 2, which is equal to 1 over 6. Here's the question on Alex. I'm going to scroll over here. I'm going to put in our answer. We had 1 divided by 6, 1 slash 6 or you can use this icon here that's highlighted. And I'm going to move down, I'm going to press check, and let's see if we got the right answer. And we did. How can we be sure if a limit exists? Well, let's take a look at this function here. We're given the function itself right there, and we're given its graph. And just looking at the graph, notice that as x gets closer and closer to negative 2 from the left. So if we're starting at, say, negative 5, and we get closer and closer to negative 2, the function f of x is getting larger and larger. In fact, this graph, it's almost vertical. Now, when we're approaching from the left, that means x is going to be smaller than negative 2, so it might be equal to negative 2.001. And if x is, say, negative 2.001, then f of x is going to be equal to 1 over negative 2.001 plus 2 squared. And that is going to be a big number. Right? And so 
f of x as x approaches a in a limit, it's going to be getting very close to, well, I shouldn't say close to because it's not a number. It's going to go to infinity. Right? If I make this number a little bit bigger, say negative 2.00001, plug that into the function in your calculator and see what number you get. And so this thing is going off to infinity. And we could kind of say, and I'll define this more formally in a minute, from the left. Right? Where x is just a little bit smaller than the negative 2 that we're interested in. And here I've actually got x approaching uh, a, but here in our case we've got a specific numeric example. x is actually approaching negative 2. A little more specific than generalizing with a. Now what about from the right? So I'll, I'll sort of just remove these here. And from the right, as x is getting smaller, so it's above negative 2 and it's getting smaller, it's getting closer to negative 2, uh, we also see that this function is going uh, almost vertical. And so it's going to be going to infinity too. And if you said, well, let's let x be equal to negative 1.999, you're going to find that f of x is a very big number. And in the limit of x, as x is approaching negative 2. From above, I'm going to add a little plus here, maybe a negative over there, but we'll go through that this notation again in a minute. f of x becomes a very big number. And it it's going to go to infinity. Now infinity is not a number. Right? Infinity is not a number. It is a representation of an infinitely large number. Very, very, very big number. And so here the limit uh, of this function at negative 2 just keeps getting bigger and bigger as we get closer to negative 2. Just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It means that the limit is not getting us closer and closer to a value. It is just getting bigger and bigger and going off to infinity. So we're not converging to anything here, and so we can say that, therefore, the limit does not exist. We're not converging towards uh, any specific value. Now let's continue on and we'll solidify this definition and make it a little more formal. But here you can see it just gets bigger and bigger. It's not actually going to a value. We wanted to get closer and closer to a value like say 2, right? Or we saw in an earlier example 1. We saw that earlier in this series of videos.